Okay, so <clears throat> you ready, Mary? Mm -hmm. I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, uh, select board meeting to order uh, December 17th. Sorry, we're a little late. Uh, the auditors were a little late because of the road conditions. Um, so, we have a motion to to uh, go. We need to go into executive session for a bit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go in the back room so you people can stay where you are. We won't be very long, but we do have some business we need to attend to. I'll in make that motion. Motion has been made and seconded to go into executive session. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll be back in five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My mother always used to say everything. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you just have to believe that. Yeah, well, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Make a motion. I need a motion to go out of the executive session. So, I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded to go out of the executive session. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Are there any additions to the agenda? No, there are not. Thank you. So now we have a public hearing for the amendment to the town zoning regulations. Section 103, definition. General store or small retail store selling groceries. Items in the bill to, to apply for an accessory use of up to 25 seats for consumption of food and premise. Sally Miller. So this is um, an amendment to the town zoning regulations, and it was actually brought to us by the <coughs> Tasville Country Store. Um, and when the Planning Commission gets requests like this, we consider it and we decided that this made sense. What we are doing, um, they had actually wanted to change the actual zoning of the property. And we decided that by changing the definition, it was a little bit broader and it would allow other um, general stores to have the same capacity. Um, so the wording is, um, in the definition, a general store currently it is called, it says a small retail store selling groceries and sundry items. And the addition, change will say sundry items with the ability to apply for an accessory use of up to 25 seats for consumption of food on premise um, and that is that's the, the change but what it means is that they still anybody who wants to apply for seating will still need to go through conditional use and conditional use has a number of criteria um, five standard ones and another seven that are um, additional criteria so um, when we had a hearing on this for the planning commission, we had a lot of task force residents that were in support of it. We didn't hear any um, major concerns. There were some questions about parking, but those would be addressed by the conditional use. And other than Tapsville, um, South Woodstock that could possibly be a yeah. Yes. Yes. So there are other there are other places where this could go into effect. Is considered a possibility? Pardon? Gillingham? It, uh, it's village, so it wouldn't be. This is town zoning. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so does, um, how does, what is South Woodstock class as currently? They're, they're, they're a store, a general store. But they have more than 25 seats, don't they? But they're, they've had it forever. Okay. That's got another one of those uses that's been okay. in there forever. <coughs> So I think there are some test for people here. Is there anyone Michael. here? Michael. I just wanted to say I think this would be a great addition to Taftsville, and I'm definitely in favor of it. So we we miss our store, and this would provide more opportunities for people to get together and interact with each other and serve as a village center. That would be great for us. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Michael. Thank you. Any other comments? I would just make a comment that. Um, I've been a few times to the South Woodstock General Store lately, and it is the cafe that makes it a thriving part of the community. So to be able to add that to Tapsville, I think would be great. 
Any other comments? So we need a motion. Do we need a motion from the board? We, we need make a motion. motion. So I propose a motion to change the definition of a general store as uh, detailed here. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is citizens' comments. Who do we have for some citizens' comments? Oh, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, uh, how should I choose? Uh, start with Linda. Okay. <laughs> My name is Linda Smitty. Uh, I'm a full-time resident uh, of the village, as is my husband, Jim, who is sitting next to me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the select board for your service as volunteers taking on this position. I know it's time-consuming, a lot of hard work, and as a village resident, I really appreciate all that you're doing for the village and the town. I know you're the town select board. Um, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak today, even though Faulkner Park, which is uh, the subject that we're particularly interested in, is not on the agenda. And as an aside, I'd like to thank Macy for recording all of these meetings because there was one that I couldn't attend and I watched it on community TV, so I think that's, that's really important. Um, there are several others who were planning to be here but couldn't come either because of the weather, holidays, other commitments, etc. Um, I would just like to, I'm not going to take up a lot of time because I know that we're not officially on the agenda and uh, I will be happy to return to elaborate at any time. Um, but. <coughs> I just want to pose some questions about the proposed transfer of Faulkner Park from the Faulkner Trust to the town of Woodstock. Uh, it's not clear to me at this particular time uh, what are the real benefits uh, to Woodstock. And the reason I ask this is, yes, the transfer does involve a transfer of $850,000, um, which is a very attractive sum of money, uh, to be sure. But it is likely that also with the transfer will go uh, increased administrative costs, potentially increased litigation costs, because now that the uh, town will be responsible for anything that occurs uh, in Faulkner Park, anything <laughs> unfortunate. And Faulkner Park, a few years ago, was um, a quiet, primarily a park that was used by village locals. That's no longer true. It's now promoted uh, in hiking trail literature. It's connected to a national park. Uh, so if you live in the area, you will see that the use of Faulkner Park has increased significantly, and not necessarily by people who live here and live in the community, all of which is fine. But I'm just concerned about the, the, ex the expanded uh, exposure. So I'm asking the question to learn more. Uh, that is really why I'm here, to ask, ask these questions. Um, and the will, I, I also wondered whether other structures were considered, whether than, rather than just transferring the park directly to the town. Um, Mrs. Faulkner's <coughs> will uh, contemplates the creation of a charitable foundation, and that might be something to consider, particularly since in an express provision in her will. Secondly, I'd be very interested in knowing how all of this actually came about. Apparently, over a year ago, December 9th, 2018, 
There was a meeting of a representative of the park commissioner, the town um, manager, the late Phil Swanson, uh, a representative of the Faulkner Trust, a representative of the select board, and a representative of the National Park all met to start discussing or to discuss this issue. I honestly don't know how far it had advanced to that point. And I'd be, I'd be very interested in knowing how did all this come about? What was the catalyst? What was the precipitating factor? Because it's clear that a lot was going on quite a while ago, well before the, um, the uh, trustee of the Faulkner Trust came to make a presentation. I believe it was last month. That's the meeting I watched, thanks to Macy. Um, and I would, I would just, I'd be interested in knowing about, um, during all that time, was there any public input at all of the abutters or um, users of the park? Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I have a cough. Tis the season. So I'm, I'll try to be discreet, but I have to put in a cough drop, if you don't mind. <laughs> Um, I would also like <coughs> to know the schedule for decision making. When does the select board anticipate the subject will next be on the agenda? What are you planning to decide or vote? That would be helpful information. And finally, <coughs> I would like, I'd be interested in knowing more details about how the transfer amount, the $850,000, was calculated. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Um, the, at the meeting that I watched on television, the trust mentioned that it had assumed a 5% return, annual return, which is a very aggressive number to begin with with these interest rates and in light of the fact that many economists are predicting a significant downturn in 2020, 10 days away, um, I'd, I'd be interested in knowing who or what entity is going to make up the difference if the, uh, if the value of the assets fall and or the endowment falls uh, how and below what the actual costs are. In some of the documents that were provided, I read that the range of costs um, were from, on average, 47,000 a year up to 79,000 a year. And I just like more information on why and those were, I believe, yeah, historical costs. What the revenue projections and the cost projections and what inflation factor was used. The trustee didn't mention any of those things in um, his report. So again, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. And as I said, I'm here to learn and would appreciate any information you all can provide. Thank you. Uh, Jill was involved in this in the inception, uh, so, so I think she can answer some of your questions. So w the where the select board is right now is that they heard the proposal at the same time as you did. Nothing has been planned. No timing has e has been agreed at all. So the first con the conversations that have happened. Thank you. Can you speak louder? The conversations that have happened so far are just to get us to this point yeah. where the trust is, is suggesting this idea. The select board hasn't been involved, hasn't had discussions or anything. So the suggestion is that, um, so Alison Clarkson and uh, Jennifer from the National Park Service know a lot about how um, the, they have been managing the Billings Parks and Mount Peck and they have been involved with the trust so far. So the suggestion is that they meet 
with you and, and I'll come as well on Friday at noon and then we can talk about all of these different ideas and they can give you the information that they have and you can ask questions and we can discuss alternatives and then maybe we bring a different a different proposal or the same proposal to the select board and then we discuss it here so we're, we're asking for that neighbor input on Friday and no neighbor input has come before okay um, so it could go on the January agenda perhaps but that hasn't been decided thank you very much that's a short if it's 850 excuse me that's that number is going to be sh way short at 850 so to like even done. the even the smallest amount that the park would cost to maintain that number is not that short and why do you say that uh, but That's plus you're not going to receive property tax any longer from the estate. So you have to deduct that from your 850 per year. I, I'm just telling you that number's gonna that number's short of whatever forty seven. The proceeds you'll get off the eight fifty is not gonna meet even that lowest number of so forty seven. The town does have another fund. Okay. It's called the Rockefeller Endowment Fund. And this year it has all for the the we, for the year that we've just audited, we um, got a 7% re net return on that money. So the town is actually used to investing a 1.8 million fund, and that wouldn't be a new concept to us. But it looked like you were only receiving how much from that fund? 26,000 a year? That's what you're getting so from that fund? We're not ready to go into these details because okay. we haven't discussed it okay. ourselves, and we're happy to discuss it with you more. Um, well, it seemed like it had been discussed quite a bit the year before, and we're just trying, ev everybody in the town really should come to this meeting and give, but nobody knows about it. So when is the meeting in the So there's a, a, a meeting proposed for Friday at 12 o'clock to get Alison Clarkson and Jennifer, <coughs> who've been involved with the Billings Park, to meet at Wendy's house with some of, of your neighbors and start talking and answering some of the questions with as much information as we know. And then if there are more ideas, we can go and get more information. Did you say it's going to be at Wendy's, at Wendy's house? house? Yeah. Yes. As long as my name has been raised. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Wendy Marinan. Um, also a concerned full-time resident, as you know. Um, and thank you again for listening to us now. Um, it's a generous offer by Allison and Jill to have a more in-depth uh, conversation, but it is still important to us as residents to come as was invited, made very clear to me last meeting that the citizens need to come to your select board meeting and be present thank you You're here. and mm -hmm. and i appreciate that clarification so we're here to keep the conversation alive that our concerns and our questions come to all of you at the same time equally um, and then when it does come time for you to make decisions then you would have heard ver these, these points and each in your own take time to think about it. Food, these are food for thought comments. And so, yes? We've also, to, we've also had questions from Jim Slutzlego right. and um, Mimi. And all of you have received those? Has everyone received an email correspondence from Diana Sattlinger and Jim Slyger? Yes. Yeah. He says no. It was passed on today. And also for Mimi Baird? Yes. So they have presented their thoughts to you, their concerns, their questions. It sounds to me like it's very important for this meeting on Friday. I can't be there, but I will make sure that the select board is represented. Jill has agreed to attend. Yeah. Actually, there's very few people coming just because it's middle of winter right before Christmas. You really would be better off to have these meetings with, if you want to know the general idea of what people think, when the, in the summer when everybody's here. Well, we don't have to make any decisions. Okay. We can just exchange ideas okay. and information yeah. at this point. It felt like it was urgent. And um, I don't believe, I don't you know, believe I think it is that urgent. people are uncomfortable with that. So the first conversation was, what, a, a year ago? And very little happened for a year. So I don't get any sense of urgency from the trust. But we just, everybody just heard about 
the meetings <coughs> this this year. No, we didn't know about the meeting no. a year ago. To, to clarify, it came very incidentally to one of um, our neighbors' attention at a social outing. The mention of a Faulkner Park transfer was spoken aloud. And as it turns out, a couple of weeks to down to a couple of days before, clarification of what exactly that, that conversation was about led to, oh, there's a presentation in two days about this matter at to you at the, the 19th, the, the select board meeting of the 19th. So back to the original point, a topic that was raised a year ago came to concerned citizens' attention in a very short amount of time before the real process of presentation, review, vote, and agreement writing might unfold. So the urgency is felt by the neighbors and the citizens because it's news to us. That's, that's the I question. News to most of the so, okay. So back to just one more point um, for food for thought on this matter, having also been at the presentation on November 19th and listening to um, the representative, I think Scott Johnson's um, and his memo that was passed out. There is a very specific tiny little comma that did not travel from the original will to his quote. And to me, this sums up a big part of a concern that's growing. And that is, would this really honor Marion Faulkner's will and wishes? Does this really? Um, so the leap, the leap that the presentation makes, and these are their words. I'll, I'll start with that and then I'll go backwards. Their assumption is, thus, Mrs. Faulkner contemplated that the town of Woodstock would participate in the maintenance and operation of Faulkner Park and that a time may come when the trustee would no longer perform such responsibilities. That is the trust's conclusion. However, I would like to say that in reading the will with the comma in place that is missing in his quote, a different interpretation can be derived. And I did say at the end, or, end of, the ninth, twi of the November 19th meeting to you all, please review the entire will and not just the quotes in the proposal. Because the quotes certainly support <coughs> their, their goal. And I will read you the sentence with and without the comma. Um, I'm going to read from the quote, the first quote on the proposal. And um, I quote from Marian Faulkner's will, it is my strong desire without limiting the absolute discretion given by this will to said trustee that such part of the real estate devised by paragraph of A, Article 12th and of the monies bequeathed by paragraph, paragraph B of said article and of the income therefrom, as the trustee shall deem to be appropriate be used, dot, 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 for the establishment, except to the extent established during my lifetime, et cetera, of the park. I won't read the rest of the words. Okay, now if I read to you what's in the will, there's a comma. And I'll, I'll read it, I'll speed it up a little bit to where the comma is, but it begins again with, it is my strong desire, etc. And she references the monies. Yes? And she says, as, and so these monies and some of the income therefrom, as the trustee shall deem to be appropriate, comma. So this money, comma, 
be used for the establishment, etc., of the park. His quote <coughs> says, without the comma, the trustees shall be deemed to be appropriate, the, the money that the trustees shall deem to be appropriate be used, comma, or dot, dot, dot. It's a tiny little thing, but there are more of these um, uh, omissions if or extractions that, in my opinion, and um, allows the will to be read in such a way that Marion Faulkner's words are public use. She never once uses the phrase land be given to town and she's only inviting the town to also contribute funds to this uh the to this uh per, the word perpetuating yeah the endowment and perpetuity. yeah and then furthermore when he goes on in his next quote to discuss the um the trustees discretion Also, this can be read two ways. And he has underlined what he feels is the most important point in her will in the quote. And what he has said, it is not my desire that the trustee continue, or he, what he has quoted, it is not my desire that the trustee continue to maintain and operate or assist in the maintenance and operation of either said home, homestead, or said park, Faulkner Park, beyond the time when in the judgment of the trustee, the extent of the use thereof shall not be sufficient to justify the expense of the maintenance and operation thereof. Now, to me, having read this many, first time and then again and again, I am hearing Marion Faulkner say, if this park isn't happening, if people aren't using this park, if it's a silly idea, then the trustees should act accordingly. Much the same as she's saying with the homestead. If no one's living in the homestead, clearly we're not going to keep paying for it. So my point is I think that the trust is arguing that they have discretion to decide when to stop being involved. And my interpretation and if I would invite you to read this again is she is saying if this park isn't actively being used I get it then that would be a different story she would say but that is not the case as witnessed by all of the neighborhood and anyone who's visited the park so in two cases I feel that in my reading of the will and then my reading of the quotes provided to you to pitch this proposal, I see two different interpretations. And I want, that's, that's a general point I want to make, that the interpretation of the will using common sense is the most important piece and would continue to support Marianne Faulkner's legacy, as I would like to see done. So are you concerned that the trustees are suggesting break, uh, not following the will? I'm suggesting that they're emphasizing an interpretation that is not necessarily a the only or the correct uh, as a as a as a, uh, understand in law common sense prevails. I'm not trained as a lawyer, but I am trained to think, read, and pay attention to the use of language and punctuation. So I, w I wanted to bring this to your attention so you might have time in to review before we get to more in-depth agenda item timing, that you have a chance to think about it in that bigger context of her will in an entirety. Thank you. Wendy. Thank you. Any other comments about the Faulkner Park before we move on? Before Thank you for your coming here. We'll try to uh, follow the process here. Try to thank you on Friday as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Any other citizens comments to be brought before the board? If not, what do we have for old business? Oh, okay, so for new business we have the uh, the uh, our Woodstock, our future, the community vision. Well, um, I was not here for that. I, I believe, I don't even know what was sent to you. I believe it's a resolution. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, we have this Was there only a one pager? Yeah. Yes. So there was no I think form? For our, for our information. Okay. Uh, there's supposed to be a formal resolution that yeah. was supposed to go with that, but if you didn't get it, then it I'd did. say just. It didn't. No. It didn't come through. So it didn't get to this, the The trustee. second attachment was the same thing. Oh, okay. So I, I'd say let's wait until next month okay. and I'll get okay. some clarity for you. Table. Okay. Now, the River Loop Trail introduction. Should we, should we table that as well? <laughs> I don't think no, so. No, thank you. All right, yep. Tom. You're a patient man. <laughs> Good evening. Yes, sir. Good evening. I think um, you all should have received uh, two pages, um, which is, and really uh, the purpose of tonight is really just information sharing. Uh, there is no specific request. It's, uh, it's just that we are making progress on, and maybe it's appropriate. Uh, we're talking about trails, but uh, uh, in speaking about that, we are making progress uh, with a proposed uh, river loop trail. As we shared with you, uh, this is intended to be uh, a three and a half mile uh, trail in the east end connected to the east end park. And it would be on the Woodstock Corporation property for 95, 99% of it. Um, so, uh, the process from here is uh, we will be going and submitting a grant to the Economic Development Commission. Uh, that grant will be submitted <coughs> early in uh, January. They then will go through their deliberation. Hopefully, we'll have success and then uh, we will then move into uh, permitting, uh, making sure that we have all the necessary uh, I's dotted and T's crossed to make sure that we have the necessary permits. Um, we will at also be asking that this trail in uh, actually would be owned by the town of Woodstock. And uh, because we need some operating entity and Perhaps it would reside within the Billings Park Commission. I don't know. Um, but the idea that this trail, uh, uh, the, the eventual requirement is that we do need to have an operation, and this should be a town trail, as opposed to the individual citizens. Uh, so at that point, we will come back to the select board with requests. And will your request include what this might take to maintain it? And Maintenance, uh, so we will be going to the Economic Development Commission for funds for construction, mm -hmm. as well as the first year of maintenance. We're not, it's difficult to fully estimate what the cost of maintenance is. We certainly are going to be learning that. My expectation is that we will then be doing fundraising. This is, uh, the maintenance of this trail is never intended to be a town maintained trail. But we take, we could take the ownership and, the, and then provide the insurance and things like that. The insurance is the major umbrella requirement mm -hmm. that uh, we would be asking, and I don't know what the incremental cost would be uh, for that insurance, but that would be the uh, only You ask. could ask that question to Frank. It, it, it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, my question would be ownership of the trail and the corporation's land. We have a long-term lease type thing. It would, we what have kind of an easement. easement. Um, we're working on an easement that would be a similar easement as used uh, by 
Green Mountain, uh, uh, Green Mountain Horse Association, the Vast Association, and others like that. It would be. Um, it is possible uh, for the Woodstock Corporation under the intended easement uh, to be able to cancel uh, that easement. This is not a permanent easement that we are requesting for this. It was the Woodstock Corporation very much supports this idea. Uh, they find a benefit from it and are happy to have the land be used. Um, but. Uh, they are not agreeing to major construction, major trail changes, and, and expensive investments. I can confirm that. I did talk with the folks at the corporation about this. Okay. They were very enthusiastic about it. Um, so we have additional work to do uh, as we go forward. As I said, we. Uh, need to get the various permits and agreements as we go forward. The hope, though, is that this trail would be available this coming summer. And so uh, it fits within uh, the EDC's efforts of trying to foster additional growth in the East End. It, it does very nicely dovetail with uh, the East End Park. I think there will be, you know, I, I don't know if you all saw within the paper, I think it was two weeks ago, discussing about Mount Escutney as they were going through their trail considerations. So what they, the quote in the paper is that 80% of Americans consider having trails and places to walk one of their top priorities when deciding where to live. Um, so it is crucial not only to our existing citizens, but in the effort to try to bring, uh, to convert our visitors into a more permanent relationship. So that's the hope. Yes. Mary. Now you, um, I was at a, I think an EDC meeting where you spoke about um, the funds. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember, and I don't need to know what you're asking from the EDC. Right. But what percentage of the construction costs are you anticipating that will be? So the overall project cost, the, um, the EDC grant request would probably be about 60% okay. of the overall. Thank you. We will have volunteer work and effort. We hope to... You know, all of us can go out there and, and try to do a little trailblazing and involve the high school and others in, in some of the preliminary work that we're doing. And it will be a soft surface trail. It is trail. a grass trail. And so it's the idea that it's really right on the border of the field that is there. That would be the majority of it. Part of the return would be on the rail bed. And so it's a trying to provide that loop back. Yep. And as a community that's located on a river, we have such limited river access. And this is anticipated to offer six or eight river access points where, you know, and there'll be hopefully benches and uh, picnic tables and we could all get out there and have a great time. And, if you haven't ever walked in that part of Woodstock, it offers a very unique and totally different view. Mm. So it's a great view. It's a great view. You see all of the surrounding hills. So that that was the update. Happy to provide my more. my only concern is yeah. I know it's a grass trail and it's right. great for walking, but what's going to happen when the bikers find out about it? We are going to have signage. And, you know, again, as some of our other parks, um, you know, wheeled vehicles are, are not, you know, allowed. And so it, it's not a long enough trail ray to really caught, you know. So we're going to discourage that in every okay. way and shape we can. We, we'll be signed and um, so on. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom. No worries. Okay. John.
Do you have any permits for overweight trucks? Yes, I've reviewed those and I make a motion we approve them. They seem to be in order. I second the motion. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the overweight truck permits. Uh, any further discussion? We don't have any. There are two. We've got two. George J. Zapp and Mark Johnson. It's on the agenda there. Jacob Hab, Mark Johnson. They Mark Johnson gets one every year. They're within the limits the state specifies, so we don't have copies. Any further discussion? All those in favor say signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Okay. Board of Sewer Commissioners. Approval for the sewer rate for 1999 to 2000. Mr. Manager. Well, as you well know, the sewer rate is a simple matter of division. You divide the cost by the uh, cubic feet and you come up with a rate. Um, the rate is up, uh, I think last year's was 918 or 920. Um, and it, uh, it is up. We have increased in the budget. That was the budget prepared before I got here. And it hasn't been approved. The budget, no, the budget no, 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 was no. there, but not approved. No. Oh, the budget. This is the this is the fiscal night. This is the budget that was approved for fiscal yes, twenty, right. which was last year approved at this time. Yeah. Okay. So it's gotcha. an approved budget. And based on the usage, this is the money we need. Can I? I'm sorry, I, I didn't really follow what you were saying. Can you say it again? Please. Sure. Um, you bill for sewer uh, January. eight months, nine months into your fiscal year, and this bill is for fiscal 20, which is the year we're in, which was the budget that was approved last year about this time. So we're using the 1920 budget to set these rates? Yeah, I leave the 19 out. I like, I like dealing in fiscal years. <coughs> this is fiscal year 20. This is the year that ends June 30th. Okay. So there's nothing to discuss because it is what it is. There's nothing what? Nothing to discuss because it is what it is. No, it, it, it is what it is. Okay. Well, it comes before the board for approval, so I'll make a motion to approve the um, sewer tax rates as presented. I um, second it. 946 per 100 cubic feet. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion proof say aye. 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 The ayes have it. So moved. <clears throat> now we'll look for a manager's report and the okay. financial report. It should be fairly brief, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I noticed you all uh, last week. Lincoln Bridge is open. Yeah. Passing traffic. Uh, Looks lovely. Uh, Newspaper is going to take some pictures of it um, and, and actually go back and forth across it, um, so he knows where it is. Um, it's a little bit ahead of schedule, and uh, the final inspection. Uh, I think uh, the construction company did a really good job. Staying with sewer for a minute, uh, the Tassville wastewater treatment facility. That little thing out by the. Uh, Castle Bridge uh, is finally back online. Uh, we have a few non-critical fixes that we still need to do, uh, classic things after construction. Um, the good news there is that will reduce sewer overtime because we've been trucking uh, material uh, from that area back to the main plant for since back in August. Um, South Woodstock plant, um, I expect to have the final analysis from Stantec due about a month and a half ago by the end of this week. Uh, in, a preview, in a preview meeting the other day, um, quite honestly, the, uh, the expense out there is going to be significantly more than I thought. Um, it could run into the two, six, seven, eight range. Um, 
there's a, there's a, sig a significant amount of contingency in that number uh, until we get to really final engineering. Um, I would like to think it would come in uh, significantly less than that, but uh, I should have better numbers. I will have better numbers, assuming Stantec performs by the end of the week. <coughs> so um, then do we budget for that number, but you look around for other people to do the work? Well, um, that's purely a budget number so that we can uh, begin to get to, that we would fine tune between now and town meeting so that the number that we approve, get approved as a bond at town meeting uh, would be a not to exceed number. Right. Um, and then we would only bond for what we actually need. Um, we've looked at renovating the existing uh, facility similar to what we did in Taftsville. Um, the challenge out there, unlike Taftsville, where we could simply load up our honey truck and bring it back to the, uh, the main plant, um, the volumes out in South Woodstock during the summer are atypical of, of mm -hmm. Tassville, uh, so I probably have to we'd have to buy rent or steal three trucks. Wow. Uh, it, it just it, it wouldn't work. Um, so I, I think the the plan I think the, the plan we'll bring to you will be to um, essentially, and I believe I'm oversimplifying, but um, we dig a new hole, put a new package plan in it, connect up the stuff, and take the old plan out. And that is really oversimplifying what we're going to do. But um, that's, that's the basis of it. Um, but I, I will have better numbers uh, probably by our next budget meeting. Uh, it was expressed earlier the, uh, the, the general feeling, I think, notwithstanding the little things that the auditors brought forth, uh, staff has done a Good job with the with the help of the folks from Nemrick. Um, I, I have a much greater degree of confidence in the financial picture today than mm -hmm. we had when I came here. Um, David asked me to uh, relate to you and and uh, therefore get it on TV. The uh, EMS building open house will have another one on July 10th. I had July. January 10th, from 5.30 to 8.30, afternoon and evening. And uh, it's been a long two days. Um, and then on January 11th, from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, anybody's invited to go tour the building and see what we're up against. Uh, as you all know, the budget, uh, the budget work is really in its final stages. I think we're getting closer and closer to something that we can bring to the taxpayers. And um, pretty much is it. The Could, can I say something? Could you make sure, please, that the dates for the fire station to, uh, open house are, are put on this serve and publicized well? Uh, Beth is going to do that. Mm -hmm. I can tell just Beth by the look on her face. <laughs> um, you have a... <laughs> A consolidated financial statement or a year-to-date um, income expense statement in your packages. Uh, at this point, we should be 42 percent based purely on monthlies that's not seasonally adjusted. Uh, and by and large, uh, when you get to the final number, we're right about 42 percent. There are some anomalies, they're explainable. Uh, most of them are seasonal. Um, and if you want, ever desire more detailed, um, we produce on a monthly basis um, a detailed account by account income and revenue, income and expense. And we do questions if there are any from the camera. I have a question about the uh, Lincoln Bridge. I live on Peterkin Hill and um, we really miss the bridge and they've done a great job of putting the thing back together. 
I go, go across the bridge twice a day. And uh, on the far side of the bridge, uh, across from Route 4, there is a uh, piece of structural steel that sticks up. I think it's part of the uh, abutment, bridge abutment. And uh, it, <coughs> if you hit that at speed, uh, any kind of speed at all, it's going to do damage to your tires. It's been there for years. But what they had done before on the old bridge, before the reconstruction, was to build a wooden ramp. That, uh, so it, when you go up the ramp, you're at level, and so you're not stressing the tires. What happens if you do that repeatedly over a long period of time, you can break down the sidewalls of the tires and they'll crack and uh, deteriorate. We'll take a look at it. Yep. Thank you. And actually, that comment is interesting because um, I hope you realize, and I hope everybody listening realizes, um, we appreciate a phone call, an email, or a, a visit. Anytime you see something that's a little out of place. Um, I've always said in my municipal management business, you can't fix something you don't know about. So we appreciate <laughs> getting those heads up. Um, I may not always be able to fix them immediately, but I really like to know they're there and we do our best to, to uh, bring a fix to it. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, so moving on, we have... I have uh, a question. Yeah. Um, this meeting that's taking place on Friday at yes. Wendy's house, um, I know you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. And in order to... Um, not have to warn it as a select board meeting there cannot be three of us there will you be going butch no ray i don't think i can make but it. i'd like somebody i'd like at least two there well this is what i was going i have to work in the clerk's office friday morning but i was going to say that um i would go uh, because as you heard at the vision meeting last week the Woodstock Vision Committee. Transparency and is very important to the, vi the Vision Network. Yes. And another thing is um, it sounded like they want the people of Woodstock, not they, the people of Woodstock want um, more dialogue and communication. Yes. And I know there is that what they see sometimes as a lack of transparency is not intentional by any means. And so I will try to get to that meeting okay, simply because I'm another ear. Right. And then we can we can listen. Because no decisions have been made and no I don't know that e any of us have a viewpoint even yet. Not so it's just listening and finding out. We don't right. have we a lot have of all information. information. Right. Yeah. So we'll be we'll be the finding out as well. I and I understand why after last December's meeting it just sort of mm. went underground, but not intentionally hidden or anything. I don't think any of that intentionally took place. But I I really think that in these sort of situations we need to communicate better as we know we're going to get that request and probably will be in the resolution we finally get from the committee I think as I think in the future we need for all of us before we we have these ideas and we take them on these ideas should be approved by the board before they become what we've got now uh, so what, at what stage would you have liked it to be approved? Well, I think that the, the idea is existing. Uh, there were some conversations between you and Allison and Phil, and uh, I think at some point the board should have been aware that there was conversation going on about Faulkner Park until we hear from the trustees of Faulkner mm -hmm. Park. And I think that would have, uh, uh, might have helped some of the people okay. who are questioning uh, when we have these ideas the board should know about them up front and maybe even approve that we pursue it so or at least have a dialogue yeah at least a dialogue um, so we have approval of 
November 19th. I got a, another tidbit on other business. So okay, no. go ahead, my friend. <coughs> uh, the uh, the uh, um, can't think of the word, but the, the cop that put the sale uh, uh, I call him the, what, what do they call him? Constable? Constable. Uh, he, I had a talk with him the other day and he'd like to see his tenure expected extended to a three year period rather than a one year period. So that's something to think about. Uh, I don't know what, what difference it makes anyway, really, but. I know he has contacted the town clerk to see what statutory um, regulations exist for yeah. that. Some yeah. can and some cannot be. Yeah. And um, I know that he's contacted Charlie and he's going to... I told him I'd bring it up. So Thank you. I did. Might be some state statute there yeah, that says he has to be some, appointed every year. As something elected or appointed. Um, he did call this morning and he and Charlie are going to have a discussion. I know okay. that. Anything else before the board? All right, now we can move on to the approval of the minutes. 219s, 122, and 125. Sounds like you're a bingo caller. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're calling bingo. <laughs> yeah. I got a joke about that, I'll tell you something. <laughs> All right, and we could have a motion to adjourn pending that. Those approval well, we and the first. expense accounts. I make a motion to adjourn and uh, after we get the expense accounts. Motion has been made that we adjourn Follow after approval the approval of the, of the minutes and expense accounts. And expense accounts. I second that. I don't know if we can do the minutes out of um, after adjournment, but I. Thank you. Oh, bye. Thank you for coming. All right. I thought we had in the past, but uh, not minutes. No. No, we okay. have to prove minutes in All while right. we're still working. All right. I'm just thinking of Frank here. Got to drive back to Rutland tonight. Okay, but why do you do that with a grin on your face? <laughs> I, <laughs> How about if I make a motion to approve all the minutes? Good. I second it. Uh, motion been made to approve all the minutes. And second from and down seconded. there. Seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. And now the motion to, to adjourn pending review of the expense warrants. I'll second that one. And the motion has been made and seconded to adjourn pending the expense warrants signified by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Have a safe trip. Have a safe trip. Thank you for Thank staying, Frank.